go. Okay. So I'm going to show you the basic setup for this digital bronchoscope, intubating bronchoscope. And there's really there's there's two parts to the um, cart. There's a camera and a screen, and then there's a light source for the scope. Mm -hmm. So the scope, you know, comes in its clean area, so you don't ever want to put the you know dirty scope back in there. Which scope is this? This is the digital bronchoscope, and you can see that it has it looks different from the other scopes. I mean, obviously, it has this port that goes into the light, light source. source. And then it has a camera attachment. Okay, so that's there's a, a, a cap that goes on there that you should keep close by because when they sterilize it, they need this cap because it gets an autoclave. And then there's basically two parts. So you plug the scope in to the light source. And the on off switch is next to it there on the left. Right. Yep, so we'll do that in a minute. And then there's a camera which hooks up to the monitor. So the camera goes onto the scope. And this, it actually attaches to the actual port here where the scope plugs in, and you line up. Okay, you'll line up here, and then it turns, and it's locked in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then this hooks up into the actual camera that hooks up. Okay. Now, now you're all hooked up. Now you can power it up. Okay. And this is your camera part. So the camera's going to be on, and you'll see there's going to be a picture that's going to show up, and it's dark. There's no light. You're not going to turn the light on yet, because you don't really want to use the light unless you have to, because it just the bulbs, I guess, have a certain number of hours for the for the digital part. The light is light here. power source okay. is there. So I'll, I'll turn that in a minute. The scope also has two other parts that you need to put together so that it functions properly to do the intubation. So there's a cap that goes onto this. They call this a biopsy port. So you could put biopsy forceps through here, whatever, but what, what I use it for is lo localizing the vocal cords and the airway and the trachea. And that okay. snaps on. And that just a... snaps right on. You don't have to do anything but snap that on. You don't have to do anything else with this thing until you're done with it. it this rips off and you pull it off. And then there's a suction port. Okay. Suction port goes on and it just snaps on. Okay, so that's and there's also a tactile that's snapped in there. snap. Right, it snaps in there, so now it won't come out, but it's got to come off the side like this. And then you can suction through here, so when you suction, you push that, and it suctions, and you can actually turn oxygen on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you want to insufflate oxygen again, you need to push that down. Okay, so that you're insufflating. Okay, so if you're going to insufflate either or suction either way, you got to push the button, and then. The actual suction, the actual biopsy port is where I use my local to topicalize the, the larynx and the um, trachea. And what I do is I hook this, this is three, this is 4% lidocaine, comes like this, you just drop three cc's in this lureless syringe. You can make a lureless syringe by just cutting the lure lock off, mm -hmm. and we have these. You just stick that on there, so you're, you're going to have that on there, your assistant is just going to flush this when you're ready. And you can you can point you can show me flushing it because I always test it too beforehand. It's hard for me to remember if I have to push this port down, but I believe I don't. I believe I have to push. Now let's see what happens here. Okay, so if you push if you push this port down, it won't flush. So you got to leave this. Do not push this button when you flush. Okay. Okay. That makes sense, right? Because it's sucking or insufflating. So I'm gonna try it one more time. Remember this. That's why I always test it first to make sure I'm, I figured out which way. So you actually don't have to put the suction port on to flush through here. So if you're not going to use the suction port, you don't have to. So it will be used only for suction? Suction okay. or insufflating. Okay. Okay. But if you don't push it down now, take a no, picture no. of the end of the scope. Uh, you can see it's not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. It's going to deliver a bolus. Boom. Just shot at the screen there, okay? Our screen got a nice shot of lidocaine. But that's what you're going to shoot onto the cords, which is yeah. great. You're going to shoot that on the cords, the patient will cough. You're going to go through the cords after 20, 30 seconds. You're going to shoot another dose into the trachea. They'll cough. Oftentimes, I'll go down to the carina and shoot one, even another dose, okay? Especially if you're going to do bronchoscopy. If you're going to do a bronch, and they're going to bronch into, in there, and the patient's, even if they're not awake, You'll have you'll have ex 
extremely good tracheal anesthesia. So then you're going to turn and the again, light on. We're not occluding that. Right, white. don't occlude it. Don't occlude the. Don't in, and it doesn't even have to be on there. You can you can flush through there without pushing that button. So now you're going to see light, and now you just want to do this to make sure you check your your scope is. You know, there's really no focus since this is a digital scope. It's already focused. You just want to make sure the end is clean. And that's how. That's your beautiful picture. Yeah. That you're going to have full view. It's it's, it's working. Then when you're done, you can actually white balance this. Okay. There's a little, on the side here, there's a little uh, white balancing area. You stick it in there, and you just push this little button. There's a button over here that says white balance, and it's done. So you'll probably get a little bit better picture. See it darkened a little bit. And you can actually adjust the brightness if you need to with this um, manual white, white adjustment here. Mm -hmm. So that's brighter. That's less bright. That's it. All right, and then how do you use the uh, the magic airway? Okay, so the magic airway, the magic airway, which we don't have, is that little the blue, blue airway. Yeah. It has two it has two ports that you can inject. Well, one port you can inject local through, and one port that hooks up to oxygen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once you've topicalized the airway, however you do it, I like to do the four percent lidocaine cream, a couple doses on the tongue. But you put the or you put that airway in. And then you, you drop three cc's of this 4% lidocaine and you can spray that right on the cords because there's a right into the posterior pharynx and the larynx. I usually do that. Um, and then when you hook the magic airway up to oxygen, do not turn it up past, I don't turn it up past two liters. Because it'll above blow off. Two to four liters will pop it right off. Yeah. That's it. Your, 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 your tube goes right through the magic airway. Can load it on there and it peels off afterwards. And it peels right the magic the airway peels right off after you're done. Mm -hmm. If I don't have a magic airway, I use one of these magic atomizers. So a lot of times after the airway is topicalized, I'll take one of these things and bend it. Yeah. Like and, 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 and I'll stick it in the posterior pharynx and I'll spray three cc's of lidocaine onto the cords. Have the patient take a deep breath. They'll cough. You know, you don't really have to do all that. I mean, if you really go down with your scope. And you spray, spray along the way. You'll usually be 100% better. It's you're going to deliver a lot more local and a lot better local if you just spray through the scope. Yep. Yeah. That's it. All right, cool.